Have you ever wondered what really happens when you hit enter in your Linux terminal? Let's open the black box and see what goes on inside your system, step by step. When you type a command, the shell, like bash or zash, reads your input and parses it. It breaks your command into parts, the program name and any options or arguments. Example, in ls-l slash home, ls is the program, dash l is an option, and slash home is the argument. Next, the shell looks for that program file. It checks if it's a built-in command first. If not, it searches through directories listed in the dollar path variable, like slash bin, slash usr, slash bin, and more. Once it finds ls, it knows exactly where that binary lives on your system. Now comes the magic. The shell asks the Linux kernel to start the program using the fork and exec system calls. Fork makes a copy of the current shell process, and exec replaces that copy with your command's binary. A new process is born. The kernel then loads the binary code of your command into memory, sets up resources like CPU time, memory pages, and file descriptors, and starts execution. From now on, your program runs as its own process with a unique PID. As your program runs, it communicates with the kernel using system calls, like reading files, printing output, or accessing hardware. For example, when ls lists your files, it's actually asking the kernel to read directories and send results to standard output. When the command finishes, it sends an exit status back to the shell. Zero means success, non-zero means an error occurred. The shell then displays the result or error on your terminal screen. So next time you run a command, remember, you're triggering a complex dance between your shell, kernel, and hardware. That's the hidden beauty of Linux. If you love learning what happens under the hood, subscribe for more Linux and DevOps breakdowns.